Do I look like a T-boying steak? Because I feel like I'm getting on the, I'm on, on a barbecue. Hey, what am I? Is it lighter fluid? Because I feel like I'm getting put on the grill for a second. <laughs> what do I look like? A hamburger bun? Because I feel like I'm being placed heat side down onto a grill. What am I? Oh, do you have one? No, I was waiting. You go ahead. Or what, what do I look like? Charcoal? Because I feel like I'm being put inside a grill right now. Yeah. What am I even? Because mm -hmm. I feel like I'm getting grilled. Yes, the good. What am I? Uh, 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 potentially. Because um, I feel like I'm getting grilled. Because I feel. Like what would you call that? Like a like a what? Okay. What am I like a channel <laughs> that you're about to pour molten steel into? Because I feel like I'm about to get forged. What? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Animal Talk, where we always start by doing whatever that was. Uh, and I'm your host. My name is Mike Falzone. Over here, this is... Hi, I'm Steve Zarag. And over here, this is... I'm Sam. And uh, you know what this is, man. Uh, this bucket is usually filled with questions that come from you guys. And it will be. As soon as you put your questions with the hashtag Table Talk in the comment section of the YouTube video, they are watching right now. And you might see it on the next episode. Could you imagine? Hey, you haven't seen this yet. We got a brand new launcher. It's painted the same color of the set to That's match. Cool. I appreciate the paint job, but whoever painted it also painted over the label that said Strensum's Topic Launcher on it. Well, maybe you need to make a Strempsons need to sides. kick their label game into gear. I haven't seen a Strempsons label in years. Yeah, are they even a company anymore? Yeah, uh, Strempsons labels. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they went under. What was their tagline? <laughs> they went over in about eighteen twenty. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't been able to make a good label since. <laughs> that was the the golden age for label. That was makers. the golden age for label making. Yeah, yeah for Strempsons. Yeah. So you know what this what this shit's all about? We read questions. These questions you may be interested to know are specifically from eHarmony. Uh, section of the website called Great Questions for First Dates. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. You really uh, pulled them from there? Yeah, I thought that was funny. That is a good one. Did you, so that means some like... What am I, some golden teeth? Because I feel like I'm getting grilled right now. Hey! hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, 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 what, yeah. what am I, a uh, 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 underwater scaled creature? Because I feel like I'm getting gilled here. Gilled. <laughs> And Sam? Uh, you know I'm not ready for this. Go ahead and pull the first yeah, one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, these are first date topics from eHarmony.com. We want to thank oh, eHarmony, wow. even though they're not a sponsor. It's just a great website where people find love. Why do you think it's called eHarmony? Because it was second. made during a time where it was fun to put the little letter E in front of whatever your website was. Because it like stands that. for electronic, yeah, electronic. electronic harmony. harmony. Yeah. yeah. So someone was like, let's call our business Harmony. You can get in there and you can make a date, make work out on the net. On the net. Yeah. And then there were a bunch of other people <laughs> in the meetings go, what yeah. the fuck is he doing? I know what he's, he's trying to say. <laughs> he must be having a stroke. But he gives us all the money. Part <laughs> out today, <laughs> bread with potato cabinet. Shit, he's talking about the potato cabinet. Somebody say E. Somebody say E. E, what if we put a little E, e. in front of? Mm, I don't know. Harmony? Built a real solid brand off Harmony. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I yeah. want to change it. But you invented the regular song Harmony, where two uh, sound files interact with Thank each other. You. This is electronic love. Got it. E Harmony. Let me put it this way. Yeah. There's E mail. Yes. There you There's go. There's E cigarettes. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, not yet. But soon. <laughs> Well, they're working on it downstairs. <laughs> I've seen the prototypes. They're solid. <laughs> no one's going to get arrested for get the it. ease things. What's on your bucket list? What's on your bucket list? First date questions for me, Harmony. Mm -hmm. Would you feel comfortable sharing your bucket list on the first date? Yeah. I don't know. Why yeah, because normally that? it's going to be shit like, I want to go to Machu Picchu. Take <laughs> <laughs> a profile <laughs> picture. <laughs> and come back down. Yeah. Well, yeah, this, is, this is tough. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd share it on my first date. And What's I would on go, your bucket list? Oh, I got a lot. Tell us. Sam. Come on. I uh, would uh, go on. I'd like to go to Fiji, and then I would like to go. Are you just saying Fiji because you don't want to say Machu Picchu? Yeah, I fucking. Do, do you want to see yeah. Machu Picchu? I fucking yeah, I want to see yeah. Machu Picchu. All the Spice. llamas up there. I don't know how they made it up there. Lama how did Pichis? they make it up there? How did they? What um, the wasn't okay. close, but I enjoyed everything that happened. Thank it you. was intense. You almost took down half the set. Thank you. 
Jeezy What's on crazy. Your bracket list? <laughs> um, I think I would. I've never thought about what's been on my bucket list because I like to think that I do a lot of the things that I like to do, and I I don't want to do a lot of the scary things like bungee jumping. I don't yeah, give a I shit. I don't want that either. Hey, because what if you die bungee jumping? You really won't. It's very very hard. Yeah, there's but like no there, way. I mean, there's a way to die. You could die on your way to work if you wanted to. Yeah, but at least you were going out there to work. No one's paying me to bungee jump. I feel like there's for me really quick if I could piggyback. Absolutely. There's a threshold for like. How, Cause like you know, yeah, you, you flying is safe and bungee jumping is safe and all these things are safe. There's all these statistics. They're pretty amazing and they're pretty factual and the percentages don't lie. But for me, as someone who suffers from intense anxiety on occasion, I feel like there's always the lead up to something. Yeah. yeah. And the lead up could be just as bad as like maybe dying. Because the lead up will make you feel like you're going to die, yeah. and you're having and to you, mentally prepare yourself. Yeah. Think of it that way. Yeah, <laughs> that's like, totally true. Man. And so I have a threshold for stuff. If the lead up is too intense, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter how how much the statistic is like you'll survive. It's less okay, about numbers. dying, and it's more about suffering through the days, months, you know, hours, minutes before you actually do that insane thing. Mm-hmm. That's my thing. I can't see somebody like that sitting down and writing out a bucket list then. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got a cool idea. Well, if, if, there's got to be, what you got to say at least one thing you have on a bucket list. Something you want to do. You want to play Madison would, Square Garden or something like that? Oh, or? look at that. Nah, because <laughs> here's the shitty, like, bringer comic aspect of that or, like, unsuccessful rock band a- aspect of that. Literally, the first thing that comes into my mind when you're like, would you love to play Madison Square Garden? Like, fuck, I gotta call all my friends and make sure they come to Madison Square Garden. <laughs> like, they told me oh, I gotta bring 15,000 people and they're never gonna have oh, me Oh, because back. You're, you're equating it to, like, the small clubs. Yeah. Where, like, yeah. You have to bring a certain amount of yeah, people. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> well, if you're playing Madison Square Garden, that means people want to see you, man. Yeah, of sure. course. I mean, in an ideal world. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about me tomorrow. Don't, somebody like, comes knock up yourself to in a hypothetical. What if somebody <laughs> offered you today like you could play it next week or you play it in a month yeah do you think you could you, I would could look, you get enough people to fill up Madison I can get Square enough Garden? person to take a small tour around Madison Square Garden for sure is that what we're talking take about take a small guided tour <laughs> around the locker rooms <laughs> what do you guys think all 15 of you guys that's fun I could pull 15 people out you could. no problem you got 15 people on your phone that would come yeah okay. dude I'm not I don't like to do this like I don't like to throw out my accomplishments and brag like that but I'm at the level of fame where I without a doubt Tomorrow could bring fifteen people to Madison somewhere. Square Garden. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Specifically, you said somewhere, which is I don't know that I could bring fifteen people to the Formosa Cafe in West Hollywood. You might be able to arrange Ooh. a birthday gathering. I'm saying for a fact. Carbon you don't think for stone. a fact you could get fifteen people to show up to your fucking birthday? <laughs> if my life depended on it, unless it was at go Madison to, Square Garden. Go ahead and throw aunts in there. <laughs> I have to I have to be partying pretty close to where my aunts are. For you can account. use family obligation to yeah. bring some solid butts. I could get 15 people right? with family obligation. Yeah. 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 I think I got enough. You second guess yourself. Yeah, I got no, I had to just count how I many family I knew in the area and how many I could bring. I couldn't bring 15 family members. Yeah. <laughs> even though I've got way more than that. Yeah. Just span it. <laughs> <laughs> I could bring 15 friends faux sure. Good. I yeah. think. Well, great. Well, you're also more famous than us. Yeah. Well, I think it has less to do with that and more to do with the solid friendships you build with over your a lifetime. <laughs> with your family <laughs> only. <laughs> okay, so I was thinking, fuck the bucket list. I was thinking... Bucket list. What if KFC <laughs> had something called the bucket list? And it's essentially a KFC bucket that you could choose from a list of items to fill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, KFC should have a new promo. I'm creating a new promotion for KFC called the KFC Bucket List. Yeah, what do you want in your like, bucket? What do you want in your bucket? I don't know, brass. Yes, good. Drum. Good. I'm going to have, can you just dump hot sauce in it? Yes, corn? yes. Oh, also, is there a way you could put all the mashed potato gravy at the bottom? Yes, sir. <laughs> keep everything in place. Next time, sir, just keep in mind, 
try to go for that one first. We're Did already, you already filling your bucket. Stuff in the bucket. <laughs> we're filling your bucket, but guess what? We're dumping it. Well, we're starting from scratch. <laughs> you can't just give it to the. It's all gone in the trash. I would like a full bucket of mashed potatoes, please. In that's mm-hmm. your bucket. What's on your bucket list is what they'd say in their this commercials. This many KFC no, mashed potatoes. Bigger. <laughs> but buckets like this big. Yeah, they're, I'm it's talking this those, big. those buckets. From like the classic, mm-hmm. yeah, the striped classic Smash buckets. Potatoes. I just got. I'm gonna say at least one sixteenth <laughs> horny, thinking about a bucket filled with mashed potatoes that you just you reach in and half of just your in elbows in there, there and yeah. you pull out a dropstick <laughs> and it's already covered in gravy. And covered in gravy <laughs> and mashed potatoes. And you're sitting there watching something on Netflix you've watched ten thousand times you before. You're like, ow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Two things. Darren and I were talking about this this morning because we found this photo of a woman holding a drumstick. Yeah. And it looked so fucking good. It looked crispy and delicious. And I was thinking, man, that looks so good. And Darren was like, I want that right now. I'm so hungry. And I was like, imagine biting into that. Mm -hmm. And there's no bones. Yeah. Ooh. And it's like, sh- but it's shaped like a drumstick. Yeah. And it's just like, argh, you get in there like the old Disney cartoons. That's yeah. revolutionary. Right? And I would say KFC's no bones, and there's no bones about it. No what bones. You would say in the commercial. I would, hate, it. I would hate that logo that comes up. KFC's no bones. No bones. Yeah. <laughs> They're all it's, shaped like me. And meat. they could do it around Halloween and they could have a skeleton come out and be like, <laughs> I'm hungry. I hate this and idea. Like, no bones here. You yeah. don't serve bones here. I was here. thinking about this. You say skeleton more than I've heard in my adult <laughs> life. I haven't heard that many people And adults should never have to say, say the word skeleton, skeleton <laughs> unless you're a doctor. <laughs> or you own a haunted house. Or you own a haunted house. You're right. I say skeleton a lot. Yeah. Here's something else I was going to say, because you were saying how delicious it would be to pull a drumstick covered <laughs> out of the bottom of the bucket. Covered in mashed potatoes and gravy. Yeah. That sounds delicious, but it got me thinking about how, like, people rarely, like, dip a thing with bones in it into a sauce. But then I was thinking, they usually serve, like, blue cheese or something with your wings. And every time I've had a, a chicken wing blue cheese experience, I never know how to dip. You don't? Know, like yeah, with the with the little wing, yeah, that's fine. But yeah. what about the like or maybe I'm thinking of the wing. Those are the legs, the little legs, like in the chicken wings. Like there's cause there's two types of wings. There's a drumstick. Legs. Yeah. <laughs> you drumstick is legs? just a it's a little drumstick's a little leg. Yeah. And then the wing is literally yeah, the wing would be like how do you dip that into the blue cheese and and enjoy it. I've seen people just dip it, but then this hand, you dip with this hand, then this hand's instantly fucked with sauce. Yeah. Is it, yeah, sauce fucked all over. Yeah. When you eat wings, you're going to get fucked with sauce for yeah. sure. Or do you have any of those friends who are just like oh, um, and then the, the See that's, gone? that's oh. what I'm talking about. Ooh. Yeah. You can't dip the wing and then expect to get all of that sauce in your mouth. This started as a conversation about a bucket list. Because, <laughs> like, you gotta, like, because the wing has the least amount of meat on it, right? Of all the of wings. Of Are you talking like a real yeah. wing, not like a hot wing bucket, like a wing Like a wing, wing like, wing. let's say you ordered chicken wings. There you go. There's okay. drumsticks and wings. Thank it's you. the thing that's not the drumstick. There you yeah, go. the thing that's not the drumstick, it's the wing. So the wing <laughs> has the least meat on it between the wing and the drumstick, Right. right. Yeah. And by the way, when you order wings, they're giving you a drumstick too. That's not a wing. That's weird. And so what I'm saying is, is when you get the wing, you gotta like you're you, taking down the whole chicken. Because right? like when I, I don't know, maybe I'm a weird dipper. Because when I dip, I like to get all of that sauce yeah. in my mouth. Here's what I'm saying. Do you know the trick where you dip it all in and go um with you just your one suck hand it? Yeah. and the, all the meat's gone? My friend Chris from college could do this with a though. wing. With a wing, with a drumstick, with anything that's this big that comes in <laughs> buffalo flavor or barbecue or whatever extra crispy delight original recipe, um, and then it's all gone. It's I don't believe it. Do you, like, I don't believe for it. it. Do you do like a thing or does he just do that? And, like, he doesn't he just do anything. He, you know bleeding. what he does for prep? He goes, watch this. <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I swear to God. It, it can't. I don't I'll think it's possible. I'll get him on FaceTime and I'll hope that yeah, he's Have him do it right now. <laughs> just text him and say, order some wings. We'll explain in a second. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. All right. I don't want to have any other conversation but that. I if just, just I don't. Hey, how's your kid? I don't want to. There's do just, any there's of not just enough the meat trick. on the wing to the like wing trick. take it. 
There is a way. I swear to God, people do that. Guaranteed, statistically, let's say this shit gets like 80,000 views, 100,000 million views. Statistically, there are people watching this who could do that and and are like explaining how to do it in the comments. But it's got to be very little meat in their mouth after that wing. Not, I've seen people do it where he puts it in his mouth and he takes off more than I have working on it little by little like it's a fucking Rubik's yeah. Cube. <laughs> I've heard of a method of the wing where you can pull out some bones. Like yeah, you get some bones just, out and then I don't like that at all. Get in there. Because yeah. you have ligaments. I already have to deal with eating off a bone, and that's already weird for me. I can't go. You already have to disconnect yourself from what it is. I can't do There's that. There's too many weird things in a chicken that could end up in the wing or the There's poop inside the chicken. Yeah, you get, there's veins and all sorts of good stuff. Yeah. Anywho, next question, I think. Go ahead. I took and the first one. Out. Did you? I may. Go ahead. Still really mix them up first. These are all eHarmony. Still eHarmony. Good questions to ask on a first date. I hope one of these is real weird as a I put a couple weird ones in there. Do sure. you read reviews or just go with your gut? Oh, good question for yeah. uh, step on Sarah. I like to read reviews. I read reviews too. But yeah. now recently I've been trying to not do that because it kind of ruins the experience for me. Well, I stay away from some spoilerish ones. This but... is for for everything, not just yeah. for movies, for like music, yeah. apps. Well, there's so many cameras. Metrics. Do I get to choose which one I hit? You should, but it shouldn't be that one because that's very close. I'm going for the one that's looking right at me. Go ahead. That'll be a good experience. Ooh. Almost. That you know straight. what? I thought because these are so far away, it's going to be a lot tougher, but it's not. People are rip-roaring these Are you guys out. filming a Matrix bullet time scene in here? All bullets are going, and the shit spins around, and it's not a good experience. It's a 360 video. I tried to watch the pilot, and I threw up. They just did a thing. I watched it happen. I get it. I so I, I like to read like I was going to Vegas. I went to Vegas this weekend, oh, and I and I, I read. Well, it's a very <laughs> you get in your car and drive there. Did you know that? <laughs> um, you, uh, I was looking at restaurants to go to for like a special occasion or something, and I was trying to find like something that is a little bit under the price range of like breaking the bank, but also still kind of nice. Yeah, and uh, I did a lot of review reading. But yeah, a lot of reviews. Restaurants reading. are restaurants are the one thing where I will absolutely read everyone and trust everyone, good yeah. or bad. Even though, like, even for the good restaurants, there's the one person who clearly had a bad day mm -hmm. and it has nothing to do with the restaurant. Like, they didn't even ask me for water when I was done with my second water. So uh, one star, I'm never coming back here again. I'll believe everybody. But then you have to go into the matrix, or you have to go into the like into review inception at that point because. What if that person, like, you, you have to give that person the benefit of the doubt. Like, maybe maybe they were having a bad day, but maybe they're one of those Yelp reviewers where, like, you go through, you have to go through their profile, you have oh, to read their other reviews and see how, how gross they are. These are yeah. so many levels. Do you go that yeah. far when you're looking well, at in reviews? Case, just in case, because if there's case. one that's like, oh, shit, that's a pet peeve, mm -hmm. I don't want to get in on that, mm -hmm. I want to go and make sure that person's not... A bullshit. <laughs> Dude, Steve's like, sometimes I won't even be hungry and I'll just start reading reviews because chances it's are nice. by the end of it. I'll be hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, an hour and a half later. Yeah, I like that. Uh, movies and music. I guess movies I read You read reviews. music reviews? I've I never No, that's that. what I'm saying. I don't. Oh, yeah. Because okay. somebody could talk total shit about um, a musician or a band or whatever, music in general, and it's so subjective that it really doesn't matter. Agreed. At I all. try to check the review for a movie. I try to. I'm mm -hmm. not good at it, but to check it after the movie to see how I like fared against it. Yeah, else. it doesn't matter oh, yeah. what I think. Like, you write the review before you see the movie, and yeah. then you try to match it up after. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll read a review before I see a movie if it's like a movie I'm not like insanely stoked for, mm. but I'm still kind of curious. Like, and a lot of reviewers will say like this is a non-spoiler review, and I'll read those. See, I feel like I would have. Unless I'm fucking up what you just said, I would have the opposite thing. If I was like Cloverfield, for example, I it's the first movie that came out in a long time that I was like, I can't wait to see this. I wouldn't read jack shit about it. Even afterwards, I'm like, I don't I, care I wouldn't about anybody either. else's. Yeah. So if you were really looking forward to it, you would not read Yeah, it. yeah, I wouldn't read anything. I want to go in blind. In fact, I, nowadays I won't even watch a trailer mm -hmm. for a movie just oh, in case. It makes it Because you go in blind, baby. Yeah, that in makes case it more they, fun. They, yeah. they, Put too much of the good shit in the. Remember, dude. I feel like every comedy <coughs> geared towards, geared towards kids in the nineties. Yeah. 
They put all, like, Richie Rich, yeah. all the other movies that came out, they put all the good shit in the Ladybugs, they put all the good shit in the trailer. Yeah. And you're like, remember when Rodney Dangerfield says this? <laughs> and then you go to the movies and Rodney Dangerfield says it and you're just waiting for the credits to pop. Up. I always like, I hate it when like, because like a Pixar movie This is the only movie, movie you could think of for the Back 90s. Richie Rich and Ladybugs. Oh, Ladybugs. Lady. <laughs> the yeah. soccer movie? Yeah. I, uh, I don't like it because like Pixar will do that too. They'll put like their big button joke in their trailer or something. Yeah. I mean, they, you know, they, they're really good about keeping the good stuff a secret, but like they'll put like one of their like funniest jokes in a trailer. Yeah. And I hate going to the theater and like they that line comes and you're like oh here it comes here's the line we saw a million times yeah and See then you, you like you wait because you listen to who's like laughing at it like who's actually laughing and it's like that can't be a real laugh you're not actually laughing at that moment <laughs> here's an interesting you saw it a million part. times you, you know who's mad? laughing at that who? you because you don't watch any of the trailer. trailer. <laughs> yes, that's it. That's it. Right. Why is it anyone else? That's so good. Yeah. That should have been in the trailer. Yeah, everyone's like, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> real pissed off about it. Have you guys ever read a review for like a doctor's office or anything like <laughs> no. that? No. You can. Coldest hands ever. Yeah. Don't want to do that. Bad bedside manner when I was dying. Oh, I would hate that. Fumbles with needles. <laughs> yeah, can't hold on to a needle to save my life. <laughs> Seem to reuse needles. <laughs> he double, needles. He, he double dipped. <laughs> <laughs> needles had a real had a real weird uh, pre-owned. <laughs> Got a double dip by those needles. <laughs> Doctor was running short on time, so saw me and Sam at the same time. <laughs> you guys cool with this? <laughs> Neither of us have a hernia. <laughs> um, all right, man, it's time. Uh, we're winding down here, so it's time for a section I like to call Mike Falzone's Lee Eel Cup of Cues, which is these are conversation starters that we don't touch it unless you're me. <laughs> uh, these are just conversation starters that I wrote and folded and put in this tiny cup. Uh, if one of... Go ahead, Sam. No, you go out. ahead. No, like, I think it's Sam's cup You already touched questions. it twice, so <laughs> Sam's little hands all over You know what they say. And that's to <laughs> ruining the whole thing. We're gonna put you it ever down. heard that expression, touch it once? <laughs> <laughs> touch touch it, twice. it twice? That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> touch it twice? Chicken soup with rice. <laughs> You've heard it. All right. True or false? You legitimately thought you were good at dancing in middle school. That's a true. True or false? Oh, no. True. That's true. never. True. I had, Never. dude, at I one took a point. Trillion. What? Go ahead. No, you. You said you took a trillion. I didn't say. You that. Said <laughs> I didn't say. A it. trillion Fred Astaire <laughs> dance. I lessons. was throwing out a little gem to, for people to grab on later. I wanted you to finish your story first. Oh shit! Mm -hmm. Yeah, how do you plant those seeds like that? A lot of pre-planning. I yeah. planned three hours ago when I was getting ready. Those UCB classes. Thank you are so much. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, you <laughs> planned a response to a question that was that randomly put in a cup that you didn't know <laughs> was in there? That's amazing. That's why I'm quiet all day. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in your head. Man, I hope that cup shows up soon. Yeah. I'm starting to lose it. I'm starting to sweat. Like when you threw in those chicken questions at the beginning, I'm like, oh no, this fucking thing <laughs> <laughs> off the rails. Oh shit. Well, still pretty close. Thanks. Um, I thought I was a great dancer in middle school. There was one day where I think there was a dance happening, but everyone was kind of everyone would roam the schools. The halls in the school, not Rome. That we would go to different school. school to school. <laughs> yeah, we Rome, um, and uh, there was a bunch of girls hanging out in the cafeteria where I think there were snacks set up, and then you can go into the gym to dance. And I walked into a group of girls, and they were like, "Mike, we're gonna teach you how to butterfly." Do you remember the butterfly? Is no. anyone old enough to remember that one? Yep. And uh, audience, get that. What happened? What, you guys remember now? Uh, what? Well, you can cut to a clip. All of the yes, cut to the nineties. Um, and all the girls taught me how to butterfly, and they were like, "Yeah, now you go in the other room and you do that." And I was like, "Oh." Well, and think right. about what you've done. Go <laughs> the when there's when you're me, and when your your self confidence is maybe the lowest they could possibly be, you're good at soccer, but nothing else. And you only kind of think you're good at soccer. Were you actually not that good? Were you better at dancing soccer. or soccer? Um, in retrospect, no. probably soccer. Yeah. <laughs> 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 being honest. Right. Um, but when you have fifteen uh, gorgeous girls tell you that's the butterfly and you nailed it, go ahead and do that in front of everyone else we know. Oh, were they? You're gonna do they that. They were. They were pranking you. 
they were treating they were being mean to you is that's that what a possibility that was for sure or do you think they thought you did well and for the age that you were yeah and for the skill levels of all the other kids around you you yeah. might have been pretty good at it. here's my thing you're in middle school yeah. okay i won't make this about everybody i'm in middle school i know two dances right one i just learned from all the girls in class and that was a butterfly Two, because you're just discovering girls and this is kind of your first foray into maybe we can kiss. Uh, the other one is you grab each other's hips and you you put your crotches <laughs> together next to each other and you just kind of go back and forth. Thanks, yeah. Dad, for describing that dance. Yeah. That yeah. Makes us... <laughs> I'm thinking back to whatever time I was in middle school and that was, everyone was doing one of two things. Okay. Everyone is either touching their middles and going back and forth. No room for the Holy Ghost. Zero ghost room for the Ghost. I was just thinking about yeah. that. My Sometimes friend... somebody turns around and there's a butt instead, and then you it's not like the guy does anything different. It's just hips back and forth like a shitty grandfather clock. Yeah. Or the butterfly. Is that until full release, or you just keep it going? When you say full release. <laughs> Let's cut to a clip. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, did you think you were good at dancing? No, no. I only knew the pee pee dance. <laughs> you had to go to the bathroom. Listen real to bad. music and drink water. And yeah. <laughs> I did not dance at all. Did okay. you go to dances? No. Oh. I, I um maybe they were the ones where they were like, everyone has to go so that there isn't like the one kid that doesn't go and like wants to die. Yeah. So like it was one of those like you know how everyone gets a trophy things at the soccer tournaments or whatever. Sure. It's it was probably one of those where everyone has to go. So I've been to those kinds of dances. <laughs> <It was laughs> dance awful. Awful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't want to do that. Ticket. I wanted to play video games. I wanted to stay home. Yeah. And I watch cartoons. And Tell shit. you one thing about a video game, you can't uh press dance your wiener up against its butt for a little while. I beg to differ. Let's Until cut to a clip. <laughs> <laughs> You did a clip thing twice. <laughs> All right, you guys. This is my uh, brand new segment on Table Talk. It's my favorite one. It's called Table Talk Takeaways. You might be familiar. Uh, I sent you an email about it. And this is when uh, everybody here has one shot. You're gonna look right at your camera. You're gonna talk about what you learned today on Table Talk. Our friend, um, whoever the fuck his name is, is gonna play some nice contemplative music in the back, and it's really gonna uh, help along your thought process. Help the audience. Is that a fact? You go ahead and fumble around as much as possible before you turn that thing on. And Make uh, as many noises as you need. Sam, you want to go first? Talk about your table talk takeaway? Sure. Today we talked about how nope, to... Nope, that's not how you do it. You look right at that camera, all right? And you talk about what you learned today. Hit it, Al Wilson. Should I wait to, for him to... You got to wait until he starts working. There Thank we go. you. Holy shit, I feel like I just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> From the 80s. Today we talked about a lot of things, but I think... The biggest thing that I learned here is how to properly suck the meat right off of a chicken wing with the least amount of bones possible in your mouth. Oh, also, fist deep in mashed potatoes. Yeah. Thank you. Is that it? Okay, Ellen, shut up. Thank you. Uh, and that's what we learned from Sam today. Steve, do you have anything? It's, oh, you're not doing class? It's not okay. the end. Uh, do you have anything that you learned that you want to share with me? answer more? Yeah, sure. Ellen, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, actually, I learned, um, as well as Sam, that you can, well, I didn't learn how to suck meat off of a bone, because no one really demonstrated that, but I heard that it's possible, and, um, I didn't have any proof, so it's not really anything I learned, it's just kind of like something someone said here, uh, that I hope, I'm actually gonna go online and look and see if that's even possible. Then you might. Uh, I also learned that... Mike Falzone played soccer as a kid, and I can't wait to tap into that for a good chance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll go ahead and shut up. Uh, good. Well, That's great. It. Thank you. I awesome. hope that this ends with you learning whatever uh, information we could take from chicken wings. Yeah, man. And my disgusting friend who can annihilate them with his mouth. Go ahead, Owen. <laughs> well, don't start on a different note. <laughs> Thank you. Whoa. Is this a and the New Year's Eve special on ABC? I feel like I'm about to run a marathon yeah. in 1996. Okay, listen to me. <clears throat> Today I learned a variety of things from a variety of friends. And probably uh, the most unsettling one is that I thought for a long time that I was a good-ass dancer in middle school. 
I thought that I was going to grow up and be one of the Fly Girls on a little program called In Living Color. You might remember Jennifer Lopez as one of those Fly Girls. I thought I was going to be one of those because I had the butterfly under my belt. But as my good friend Steve pointed out, and usually friends point out, fun things that you take into the rest of your life and build off of and laugh and share memories. He pointed out that they might have been pranking uh, me and that maybe I wasn't half as good of a dancer as I thought that I was at that time. And now I have to live with maybe not being that good, but maybe that's not the worst thing in the world. Oh, Owen, wonderful. get out of here. Wow, nice. Take your keyboard and get the hell out of, off my seat. Sometimes you just fucking... Okay, guys. Thank you for watching Table Talk. My name is Mike Falzone. Steve Zaragoza. Over here is my friend Sam Bachier. Hello. Uh, you can fill up these uh, buckets so we don't have to uh, take questions from eHarmony anymore by uh, putting your question in the comment section for this video with the hashtag Table Talk. We'll just pull it from there. You don't have to go to Reddit or Twitter. Everything happens in this place it's a safe place or Go they could they could just send us a bucket filled with their own questions it's already filled up <laughs> just send us buckets with <laughs> questions in it a lot of people fill, uh send us empty buckets yeah and you know what good is that yeah send us filled up ones please yeah what's on their bucket list we don't ask the questions don't go that way thank you guys so much for joining us today please join us next i am on table talk what am I on a TV show here? Because I feel like I'm on the guild. Go ahead and play us out, Owen. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready? What's that, a countdown? We'll go at the end of the countdown then, right? Okay. <laughs>